Cheers everyone. Welcome to Huji Productions. Mm, nice cover. So today we're going to look at fitting an ordinary oil filter by using one of these adapter plates that you can buy quite readily and that allows you to use a spin on filter. So it's an autumn day in the UK. We're up at 15 degrees C, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a beautiful sunny day, and the forecast is to rain for the next two weeks, so we're gonna crack on with this job today. So the Morris Minor is uh, leaving its mark of territory around on the parking area, and that's a result of this original filter housing down there it's leaking at the bottom so we'll get under try and see it wherever it is where is it oh it's here so it's dripping out of the bottom of it and it does have a brand new seal fitted and it's tightened up and I can't get it to seal and they're a bit of a faff changing so I thought I'd go for a spin-on filter and use a normal everyday oil filter that most cars use. Okay, so the old uh, paper element filter is held on with these two screws and there's an oil feed into it here, or return, I'm not sure which way around. But uh, I've got to undo this unit and these and I've got an oil drip tray underneath so I'm just going to see if I can loosen these which are very easy to do and I'll go away and work out what size I need for that other unit so I think there's a, an adapter that goes into the die cast fixing and then there's a pipe connector that goes into that Always the way. Still, at least it's loose. Let's just wipe around that first. Should have done that first. First. Right. That's doing that. Okay. Right, I don't know if you can see anything of what's going on. I might try and get some light on this in a minute. Anyway, that's that cleaned up. That's the connecting pipe which you can't see very easily. I've got these handy USB rechargeable work lights. To, it's meant to be magnet on the bottom, but it's not very strong. It's sort of okay. Let's see if that will help illuminate down here. Right, yes, this is the oil connection which goes off to the engine. So let's just spin that up. That's the one that's gonna connect, hopefully straight into the other adapter, unless this goes in, in the old adapter. To be found out, handy socket here. So spin these nuts off, remembering that there will be a full oil canister as I say I've got 
drip tray underneath. So what could go wrong when you're dealing with the engine oil? Okay. Not quite. Let's bring her back. Again. Take this off. Okay. been attached to that engine for decades. I might just need a little tap. Okay. So I've got my very handy dead blow hammer. Let's see if this does anything. Not the way I'm doing it anyway. Whoops. Feels like a Haynes manual job, you know, the one that says onto the two nuts and pull the adapter plate off, and you're there with a blowtorch for the next half an hour. Bring you back in a minute. I think she moved. I don't know how much oil we're going to lose when we do this. It's not something I normally do. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. I'm also wondering, I'm not sure you can actually take it off with a filter in place. There's that. It's going to knock on there, isn't it? And the threads are already uh, not moving an awful lot. Right, I'm going to take this off and skip this bit of video right well i've just gone underneath the car to unbolt the adapter and look what i found a socket i must have dropped this when i was working on it the other day what we got inch drive that's a good one meanwhile I'm going to uh, undo that bolt and get oily okay so the filter unit is off caught some of the oil try and get this off So, judging from the size of that and that, obviously that's got to come out and go in the new one. So, I'm going to be doing that whilst I drip oil everywhere. Marvellous. Okay, so, at the moment I can't get that adapter out of the adapter. It's absolutely seized in there solid, so I left it soaking with a bit of plus gas and I'm going to have a go at getting these studs out and also we need to remove and clean up the gasket that's on the engine so that's the next part and I can try and do that while the other bits soaking okay so just in the corner of the screen there so to take the stud out I've put two nuts on with a anti-shake washer in between them and I've tightened them up together and I've just had a go at trying to undo it and it just undoes so it wasn't difficult but this just gives me a way of being able to take it out without resorting to mole grips I suppose 
but at least it's coming out, or at least this one's coming out. Not very tight. Lovely job. Happy with that. And see if the other one comes out as easy. Could be in luck. Yeah, nice. Okay, so here you have the old and the new. I finally managed to get this out of here, which was an absolute pain. It was in there very tight. And this is an awkward shape to hold in the vise securely. So I need to clean up the threads a bit more on that end and pop it into here ready to go back on. And I still need to get the old gasket off. Here's the new gasket, new studs. It's interesting to see how different the length is for the old and new fixings that hold adapter and the new adapter has got a very short flange so it's a lot a lot less to get in the way I suppose anyway press on okay so I'm going to try and get a little video of the bit down the back here because I can't see it and you haven't seen it so oh, there it is so it's here is the gasket that needs to come off uh, which I will struggle with off camera got to remove that make sure that's all cleaned up and then fit the new adapter again one thing I would suggest you consider although I couldn't be bothered to do it myself was to take the dynamo and the coil out of the way because they're kind of way in the way of what you want to look at. So that might be worth considering. Okay, so. I may start getting the gasket off. Most of it's come off. There's a couple of bits around where the holes are that were stuck on. So I've got to get rid of those before I can put the gasket on. It's all cleaned up tiny dot in the distance which I've hopefully I've zoomed in on so I'm just popping the new studs in and I'm attempting to nip them up but I don't think I can do it without yeah okay so new studs in and pop the gasket on Oh, it's fell over everywhere. Pop the gasket on. Trying to get it the right way up, of course. So that is going on. Okay. And the adapter with the adapter on. Goes on next. Washers, new nuts, itchy nose, and that's me, my hands are either sticky or oily, there's no in between, spin them on because they're all clean and nice. Normally put a dab of grease on these, but I forgot. And I can imagine that this area won't be devoid of oil, at least not completely. Right. Yeah, honestly, I sort of attempted to take out Dynamo. Or or alternator if you've got an alternator. So for the purpose of the video, let's pretend that's all in. That pipe is going to have to move a bit to match in. It's a bit, bit of a gap there. It's 
it's quite a stiff pipe. May have to uh, maybe loosen the other end to make it easier. Okay. Right. I'm going to switch the recording off while I mess around with these. That you can't see. Right, hang on. So this is what it looks like now. So that's the gap with the pipe, new fixings on, new gasket, new washers and nuts. So I'll do them all up and then look at the oil filter. So at the moment I'm trying to get this pipe to go between the engine up here and the connection to the adapter down here. Um, I had to reshape the pipe slightly. I think it I'm not sure if it's right yet. I think it's now slightly too long instead of slightly too short. Give this another try. Okay, so it's taken ages to get this uh, metal pipe bent to the shape where it'll actually attach, and with no chance of me cross threading the threads. This is hopefully. Oh, that's a good start. So I'm now going to try and fit this with my arms around the camera. Nope. It's a lot easier when you're not filming, for sure. Just dropping the tools. Let's deliberate that one. Okay. Is that nipped up good and tight? Okay, good. So, this is the old canister, and this is the old paper filter. And what I did, because Derek advised it, has put the date. So this has actually been in there a year, but it's done very few miles. Pick up all the bits I dropped, because we'll be wanting to keep at least the housing. Okay, so, in case we forget, or a car goes to somebody else and they don't know, I shall put the date, 
That really is the date. And we're going to put the mileage. I'm going to put a dot there because I don't know how many thousands are in front of the 24. There you go. So what I'll do now is I'm going to pre-fill this with oil because obviously we lost some oil dropping the other one out and smear some oil around the seal and then spin it on the hand tight then I'll check the uh, oh look I've smudged it it's a good start isn't it I shall check the um, what are my words doing I'll start it up and check for oil leaks. So just to show you what it looks like with it all together. There it is. Let's just check it. Behaves. Looking for the oil line to go out. And of course, always check for leaks. We are getting something down the back of that pipe. Which, I don't know if you can see. No. It's around the back of it. So I'm going to have to sort that out. Okay. Okay, so it's all back off. As I was doing the adapter up to try and cure the leak, it felt like this is the adapter bit I mean. It felt like this had stripped the threads in here. It went loose. Um, I mean obviously that one's okay. And looking down inside it, can't see anything particularly horrible the only thing I can think of is that down the bottom there there's a bit of a burr there and I wonder if that's I kind of broke through that as I tightened it up well she's back on we'll, uh, we'll see what happens whatever happens that's it for today well, I've been running over for a few minutes and I think we're okay now. Finally, the job is done. Sun's going down. <laughs> <laughs>